Number 31. Two children pull a third child on a snow saucer sled, exerting forces F1 and F2, as shown from above in figure 4.35. The figure's on the right, though. So find the acceleration of the 49-kilogram sled and child system. Okay, so just take a look at the photo uh, picture over here, guys, on the right-hand side. So here we have two children. One is detailed as F1, and the other is detailed as F2. F1 is pulling at an angle of 45 degrees uh, north of east with a uh, resultant vector value of 10. Uh, F2 is uh, pulling at an angle of 30 degrees right south of east and has a resultant vector value of 8 newtons. And I did that, I detailed that here in my free body diagram. Okay, they almost they also told us the frictional force here, right? And that frictional force. Uh, it, it's not mentioned to us in which way it is directed, because remember, the frictional force will always just oppose the motion. So in order to really figure out what direction the frictional force is pointing in, we'd have to figure out what's the direction of the overall resultant uh, vector of these, right, two vectors. Now, just from the picture, you can probably tell it should lie somewhere in here, right? Um, but we actually should calculate it. We don't necessarily need to know the angle, but it probably would be a good thing to do anyway. So in order to calculate the resultant vector of these two, remember, we can add the vectors together and then um, and then find the resultant from there, right? So I'm just going to set up my component table here, all right? Anytime I know I'm finding a resultant vector from component vectors, I know I'm always going to use this method. So let me use this as my F1. Okay, and this color for my F2. So first let's look at F1, and I'm going to use the, the uh, vector in red here. So remember it has an X and Y component. Here's the X component, right? Here's the Y component, straight up. Okay, they're both positive. All right, so in order to find the X component, right, we're going to be using cosine. Why? Because I know the hypotenuse, I know this angle, and I'm looking for the side adjacent to that angle. So cosine of theta will equal opposite over hypotenuse. Okay, cosine of 45 will equal the, I'll call it F1 of X, all over the hypotenuse value of 10. So F1 of X now should simply equal, take cosine of 45 and multiply it by 10. And we get a value of 7.1. That's 7.1, and that's in newtons. So take that value, plug it into your table. 7.1. Great. Next, let's do a y. Obviously, now that's going to be just the sine. That's opposite over hypotenuse. So the sine of 45 will now equal f1 uh, sub y, okay, for the force of 1 in the y direction, multiplied by the hypotenuse of 10. So when I do that math, it simply comes out to be the same, right, because it's a 45 degree angle, 7.1 newtons. So plug that in, 7.1. Good. Now, Moving on to the uh, vector in yellow here. Remember, this has both an X and Y component as well. Here's the X component, it's positive, and here's the Y component, it's negative. Keep that in mind, okay? So to find the X component there, we're gonna use cosine again, sorry. We're gonna use cosine again. Cosine of theta is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. So cosine of 30, of 30 is equal to uh, V, not V, F, sorry, F, 2 sub x all over 8. So f2 sub x will equal, uh, take cosine of 30 and multiply it by 8. And we get 6.9. So this is 6.9 newtons. Plug that into your table. So 6.9. Now let's do the y value. Okay, so y would be sine. Sine of theta is equal to the opposite side of the hypotenuse. So sine of 30 is going to equal, now here's the thing. Remember, we said that the y component here was pointing in the negative direction. And what that means is that we're going to have a negative, right? F2 sub y all over 8. Okay, So negative F2 sub y, cos sine of 30 is half. So therefore, this should be 4, right? 4.0. Now simply just distribute the negative sine on over to the left. I'm going to do that by erasing it and just putting it on over here. And that's in terms of newtons. So now add that to your table. So negative 4.0. Now go to the component table. And remember, when you add up these components now, both x and y individually, we do find the components of our resultant vector. Okay. So take 7.1 and add it to 6.9. What do we get? 
get a value of 14. And now just do the subtraction here, right? 7.1 minus 4.0 should be 3.1. Perfect. Now, what does this look like? Well, why don't we draw a coordinate system? Okay, let's go out uh, 14 units on the x-axis. 14. Let's then, at the tip of that vector, let's draw the tail of the y. Let's go up 3.1 units. And now the resultant here is simply going to be right, the hypotenuse of this triangle from the start to the end. All right. So how do we solve for this? Obviously, this is it's a right triangle, so we can use Pythagorean's theorem. All right. Uh, what this is, this resultant formula, is basically a reworked Pythagorean's theorem. Okay, sum of all the x's squared plus the sum of all the y's squared. So I already summed them all up. All right, so square root of 14.0 squared plus uh, 3.1 squared. All right, great. So plug that into your calculator. So square root of 14 squared plus 3.1 squared. And we should get a value of 14.3. Uh, so 14.3. And that is in terms of Newtons. So that is the resultant force. Okay. So that's the net force that um, when I combine these two vectors, that is the net force on the snow saucer sled. So, and that vector, right, would be like right in here again, right? Isn't it? That's basically what we said before. It should be somewhere in there. Now, we don't need to, but why don't we just calculate the angle quickly, okay? So the angle of the... Um, uh, the resultant vector. So we would do that by doing tan of theta, right, is equal to the y value over the x. So the tan of my resultant angle is simply uh, 3.1 over 14.0. So do that division, okay, 3.1 divided by 14. And then do the inverse tan, or second tan of 0.22. And what do we get? We get about 12, right? So this works out to be 12 degrees. Great. So that's the value on in here, 12, oh, that's the value, 12 degrees, one, two. And that should be, again, if you go back to the main free body diagram, that looks like 12 degrees in there, right? So it all makes sense. Okay, now, so the whole picture looks like this now. Let me draw the resultant vector at 12 degrees, north of east. So this is 12. Okay, and the value of this resultant vector we found to be 14.3. Now, this is the net movement, meaning the sled. If you go up to the upper right-hand uh, corner with the picture, the sled is, going, is experiencing a net force in this direction, right? Okay, so if this saucer is moving in this direction, where's friction pointing? In the exact opposite direction. It's pointing that way, right? Does that make sense? So in terms of my free body diagram down here, I have a force of friction pointing here. And it looks like a little bit of an angle. I don't know if I'm gonna get it perfect, but that's reasonable. So it's pointing here, okay? Eh, it's not to scale, right? It's gonna, it's smaller. So I also gotta make it straight and a little smaller. Eh, that's good enough. So here it told us it's, it has a value of 7.5. So this is 7.5. Now what's the angle? What's this angle in here? It's going to be the same, right? That's going to be 12 degrees. The same as the angle over here, right? Alternate interior angles or whatever the heck the uh, theorem is. Okay. So, um, so that's fair. All right. Now, do I really need to know this angle in order to solve the problem? No, 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 no. We don't need to take into account X and Y components of the force of friction or the frictional forces and whatnot. The reason why is because the frictional force always just opposes the motion directly. So in other words, I only care about the, uh, the linear values here, okay? Because I know it's gonna move net this way, and therefore the force of friction is net this way. So in other words, I can kind of just rotate the system a little bit, right? I mean, if I wanted to just make it a little nicer for myself, I can just simply put now the 14.3 on this x-axis right here. This is 14.3, and then put the force of friction on the x, on the negative x, right? Over that way. And that would be then the 7.5. And now this problem looks nice and easy, right? So uh, 
remember, uh, this it says that we have to find the acceleration, so it appears that we should be accelerating to the right, correct? So we have this, okay? And uh, we're looking for the A here, right? And we do know the mass. Uh, they told us it was 49.00 kilograms. So I have everything I need. Let's start using the sum of the forces equals MA. So the sum of the forces in the X direction should equal MAX. So we have 14.3 minus 7.5, because those are the two forces, is equal to 49.00. Sorry, I ran out of space, times A. Okay, actually, let me just try to sneak in the A right over here. So just divide out the 49 from both sides, right? 49.00. So my A value now will be, and as you can see, it's gonna work out to be positive, which it should be, minus 7.5, and divide that whole thing by 49. So we get 0 0.14. So 0 0.14 meters per second squared. So that is the acceleration. Okay, that's the magnitude. And again, they might now um, find the acceleration. Yeah, acceleration is a vector, right? So technically speaking now, I can simplify it how I did here. Okay, I can kind of put it right on the x-axis. But if you have to give a direction now for that acceleration, you really have to you know, take it into account, you have to take um, the directions over here into account, right? You have to take the directional component of the net force, all right? So technically speaking, this simplifies it, all right? But if you now have to give a direction to it, please do not say in the positive x-axis or, you know, due east or whatever, because it's not. Remember, the, according to the picture up here, we're going to have a net force in that direction, okay? So completing this, assuming we have to give an angle and whatnot, we would say that, um, you know, this snow saucer sled, I can't say that fast, I have to pause when I say that. Snow saucer sled um, has an acceleration, well, that's an O, has an acceleration of uh, 0 0.14 meters per second squared at uh, 12, oop, 12 degrees north of east. Okay, that would be a complete description of the acceleration. Guys, thanks for tuning in. I hope this helped. Uh, please remember to subscribe. That would be awesome. And I will see you in the next lesson.